By request, I'm making this short little series devoted to my original performance entitled Proof That Opposites Attract. So what I thought I would do is perform this routine at three different levels of sophistication. Okay, so here is the very basic routine shown in that 60 second card video already posted on the Hidden Structures channel as well as my LinkedIn page for my Math Card Magic group. Okay, so for the basic routine, you can begin with any number of red cards and any number of black cards. Now it's important that you have the same number of each. So what we do here, and if you've watched that video, we just kind of set these down like that and have the spectator randomly decide how to stack these. That's just fine. Okay, from there what we did was we performed a Klondike shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom card off as one. Okay, now from there we had the spectator decide how many cards to deal out for a rosette shuffle. And so maybe they'll ask for four, set the rest down and then we just spin these, that's a rosette shuffle, and just bring those together, okay? And they may bump up against each other like they just did, okay? And then from here, we perform what's called a mange shuffle, over, under, or an under, over. So I think we did an over, under, so this is where you push the top card into your other hand. This one goes over, next one goes under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And then from there, we dealt out the cards into two piles and allowed the spectator to decide how to randomly stack these. Would they like the left pile on top of the right or the right on top of the left? Maybe they'll ask for left and right. Now, the important thing is you can do as many of these as you like or the spectator calls for. Maybe they'll want right on left this time. Why don't we just do one more to keep this video short and maybe they'll ask for right on left again. Okay. And then at this point to confirm this aphorism proof that opposites attract, we just Klondike pairs of cards to the table to confirm that that is indeed the case. Opposites will always attract. And there you go. So that is the original performance. It's the most basic version of this. So why don't we take a moment and look at some of the mathematics for this one before we go on to the video dedicated to the intermediate routine. Okay, so once again, we started with a five. So any number of red and black cards, as long as you have an equal number of them. Okay, and then you can randomly stack these however you like. Okay, now think about what's going to happen. So right now we have red on top, black on the bottom. If we perform the Klondike shuffle, which is how we started, it will take a card from the bottom, so a black and a red, and set those down. A black and a red, set those down. Black, red, black, red, black, red. This is an alternating packet. It alternates in color. So we're only focused on the colors, not the card values. So this is called a cyclic construction. And when we have a cyclic organization of any sequence or a packet of cards, something called the Gilbreth Principle applies. So what is the Gilbreth Principle? Well, it involves two steps. So you have a structure such as this. And by the way, I should mention that this is a five cycle with cycle length two. Now the cycle length refers to how many cards, in this case, we're looking at cards, how many cards does it take for a certain pattern to repeat? What's well, two? So every two cards, it repeats this pattern of red and black. Okay, so this, and there's, and it does it five times. So this is called a five cycle with cycle length two. Well, the Gilbreth principle guarantees the following will happen if we perform just two actions. And these are very natural actions to perform when dealing with cards. So the first thing you do is you reverse count or deal out 
any number of cards. You could do none of them, one of them, all of them. Okay, so I dealt out four of them and then you set the others down. Okay, and now we just have to do anything that's equivalent to what's called a riffle shuffle. Now, a riffle shuffle is where you have a packet of cards, you, know, you break it roughly in half, it doesn't matter, and then you have the cards fall left, right, left, right, how they may, and then you can bridge them if you like. Something that's equivalent to a riffle shuffle is this rosette shuffle, and it's great for small packet sizes like we have here. And then you just bring the cards together, and they are truly just just randomly interlacing themselves. We're not, no one's controlling how that happens. Okay, so we've performed the two actions for the Gilbreth principle. So now the conclusion of the Gilbreth principle will be in force. And what is that conclusion? The conclusion is that if you take off groups of cards having the original cycle length, so here it's two, each pair of cards will consist of one of each color. Okay, so just like that. Now, notice that it's not necessarily the case that they're in order anymore within the pairs. The Gilbreth principle does not guarantee that. It just guarantees that within each pair, you'll have a red and black in some order, which is most remarkable considering that we randomly dealt out any number and then we just interlace them in this very messy, haphazard way. Okay, so this is an example of the conclusion of the, of the Gilbreth principle where the cycle length was two. Okay, so from there we, we um, of course, we, you know, we didn't show this in the original performance. I'm showing you under the hood to see what's going on. Okay, now technically this packet in the language of the Hidden Structures online course, this is an AMP. Okay, so what's an AMP? AMP stands for Adjacent Mirrored Pairs. Okay, so what that means in particular is if you take the cards in pairs from either the top or the bottom, they'll consist of cards having the characteristics that we set up at the beginning in our arrangement of the cards. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying that if we take up, if we look at the top two, they will be of opposite color. Well, we already know that. The next two will be of opposite color, right? Okay, we already know that as well. So this is called an AMP. Well, it's a very special structure to work with, actually, because, for example, if you perform the Mange shuffle, which we did, this is where you push the top card into the, your other hand, and then we can do an over, under, over, under. Either one would work just fine. So maybe we'll do an under over this time. So under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Okay, so anytime you have an AMP structure, that shuffle is guaranteed to convert it to a mirrored structure. Okay, what's a mirrored structure? Well, it really means what you probably would guess it would mean just because of the, the name of the relationship. Okay, so we have uh, 10 cards, so may, I'll create a clear break there. So the very top card is related to the very bottom card in those pairs that we just saw a moment ago after the Gilbert Shuffle was performed. So the top and bottom, opposite color. The next one here, it's mirrored mate, is right over here, it's opposite color. The mirrored mate to the eight is the third one down over here, or third one from the bottom. So those are opposite color, two and the ace, opposite color, ten and the king, opposite color. So this is called a mirrored structure. Well, on my Hidden Structures channel and also on my LinkedIn page for the Math Card Magic group, I have a video entitled The Stay Stack Principle. The Stay Stack Principle applies to mirrored structures like this one, mirrored organizations. Okay, so what is the Stay Stack Principle? You can watch that video to get a really good idea as to what this principle does. Uh, but the simple version is for every divisor of the packet size, we have 10 cards total. So in particular, 
2 is a divisor of 10. That means that we can deal out the cards into two piles, left, right, left, right, with random stacking. Left pile on top of the right or right on top of the left, and it will still be mirrored. We will not have harmed anything. Why don't we do a few of those, and I'll show you that it's still mirrored. Okay, maybe we'll do right on left this time. Maybe one more. Now, technically, we could deal out into five piles if we wanted because five is a divisor of the packet size, which is 10. Uh, but in the original performance, we just did two piles. Maybe the last for right on left again. Okay, so let's just confirm that this is still mirrored relative to the characteristic of interest to us. Namely, we're looking at cards of the opposite color. Okay, within each pair. So is it true? So the, the five, the, it's mirrored made is over here at, at the bottom, which is a red seven. So we have a black red, the red three, the black six, mirrored mates, black two, red ace, and so forth, all the way to the middle. Okay, so this is still mirrored, even though you can check the cards have been rearranged. They've been permuted. They really have been moved around. Okay, but the overall structure that we're interested in has been preserved. Okay, well, now think about what we did to finish. Okay, so we're not to finish. We're just going to Klondike pairs to the table. Well, what is that going to do? Think about it. So the Klondike Shuffle takes the very top card and the very bottom card and pulls them off together. Well, that's black five, red seven. We have a pair of opposite color. Uh, the next pair to be pulled off will be the red three and the black six and so forth. Okay, so at this point, you're guaranteed to finish in the way that we're supposedly trying to confirm the truth of this aphorism. So is it true that opposites attract? Well, let's find out. And of course, we're going to confirm that that's the case here because of the mathematics involved. Okay, so that is the, uh, quote, basic routine. And so we're going to go on now in this series to the intermediate routine. So this is going to increase the level of sophistication and complexity a little bit. So I hope you join me in that video.